Atomic structure is a big topic, but it's fairly simple stuff. So I'll try to go over as much as I can here in this video. This here is a periodic table. It's everything in the universe simplified to just over a hundred elements. When you look at a single element on the periodic table, you'll see a bunch of numbers. Knowing what they mean will give you a good idea about the atomic structure of its atom. Say you're looking at oxygen on the periodic table. The number at the top is its atomic number, and it tells you the amount of protons an element has in its nucleus. The important thing to know about protons is they dictate what element you're looking at. If an atom was given more neutrons, it would become a different isotope of that element, but still be that element. However, if you somehow added a proton to it, it would become the next element. In the case of oxygen, it would go from the eighth element to the ninth element, fluorine. The atomic number also tells you how many electrons are orbiting the oxygen atom. The other number on an element in the periodic table is its atomic mass, its weight. Yes, atoms have weight. A proton weighs one atomic mass unit. A neutron also weighs one atomic mass unit. And electrons weigh virtually nothing. But if you really want to know, it's one 1836th of an atomic mass unit. Using this information, you can use the periodic table to find out how many neutrons an element has by subtracting the atomic mass from the number of protons. This is why the atomic mass is also called the nucleon number, since it tells you the total stuff inside the nucleus. We can now move on to electronic arrangement. This is an atom. To be more specific, this is the model of the atom that you need to know to understand basic atomic structure. Anyways, in the center of this atom is the nucleus, comprised of protons and neutrons. These things all around the atom are called the electrons. They orbit the atom in shells, sometimes called energy levels, but I'm gonna call them shells. The thing with these electrons is they fill the shells in a certain order. The first shell can only hold two electrons. The second shell can hold eight, and the third shell can also hold eight. Well, sort of, but for the basics, it's eight. And the fourth shell can hold a number you don't need to know for the basics. In fact, there is no limit to the amount of shells, but let's keep it simple. Next, you may remember me using the word isotope earlier in the video, but I think the term needs to be fleshed out a little bit more. So to begin with, the definition. An isotope is an atom of the same element as whatever you're looking at, meaning it has the same number of protons. However, it has a different number of neutrons. It's important to remember that all atoms are isotopes of an element. There is no basic form of an element, but different isotopes decay at different speeds. What does that mean? Essentially, some isotopes are more stable than others, meaning it takes longer for some isotopes to lose its neutrons. Finally, ions. Ions are not to be confused with atoms. Ions have a charge, either positive or negative. Atoms don't. Quick reminder, protons have a positive charge, electrons have a negative charge, and neutrons have no charge. To explain ions, I'll use the magnesium atom. This atom is an atom, not an ion yet. If I add an electron to it, it now has a negative charge, and if I took one electron away, then the protons would outnumber the electrons, and so the magnesium atom would have a positive charge. Definition. An ion is a charged particle. So, thanks for watching. I hope this was useful. Bye-bye.